Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sounds of Her Love, part number five. I'm playing at a different time today, so the blue light filter isn't in full effect, and Carrie looks even more beautiful than usual. I just thought, I'd, you know, let y'all know. You probably see it, because it, it doesn't record my screen with the blue light filter, so you probably always see it this way, so it doesn't look any different to you, but it does to me, so I, I just thought I'd point that out. Let's go ahead and get right into things. We are going on a date to the library, which is very uh, intellectually stimulating and uh, stimulating in other ways as well. So let us uh, let us get right into this. <clears throat> Soon enough, in my sight, I catch Carrie's blonde braid swaying softly in the wind as she twiddles with her thumbs and waits for me. I always thought her hair was like more red just because of the 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 warmth the warm red color of my my screen with the blue light filter so this is a uh, I'm seeing her in a different light so this is this is a quite epic She hasn't noticed me approaching yet oh, ho ho you're approaching me Markapi but she soon will I don't think I'll be able to cover her eyes and surprise her As I approach her something weird is made apparent she is still wearing her school uniform, even though it's a Saturday. I have to admit, it does look good on her, but I was hoping to see her wearing something casual. Maybe I should ask her about it. She turns her head towards my direction and finally takes notice of me, looking visibly startled, even though I'm still nowhere near her yet. My hand glides through the wind as I wave to her, slowly but surely making my way beside her. Hey, Carrie. Hello. How long have you been waiting for? I knew she would arrive before me, but I wouldn't want her to have waited for too long. Oh, not long. Hmm, a likely story. That's good. She could just be saying that to make me less concerned, but I'll trust her on it. Shall we get going then? Carrie takes the initiative and I give her a truthful response. Yes, I'd love to. Carrie blushes at my answer. I really do want to go on this trip with her. Wait, Carrie. I'm not really sure whether this is a good time to give it to her, but it's agonizing to keep waiting. I really want her to have it. I have something to give you. Pulling out the book out, fuck. <laughs> Pulling the book out of my coat, I present it to Carrie in a similar fashion as when she presented hers to me. Maybe not in such a passionate way as she did, but the passion is certainly there within my fingertips. Carrie stands still, taken aback. She curiously peers towards the book, reaching out and tracing it with the tip of her index finger. She softly brushes mine in the process. Oh, dude, we're holding hands, basically. Going red after the surface of our fingers meet one another. S -s sorry Oh, God. We have to protect her at all costs. You don't have to apologize. She looks up towards me, and our eyes meet. Her amber... Her amber... Is this a part of an eye? I, I don't remember this from anatomy class. Her amber irids shimmer in the morning light, which are too soon diverted back towards the book within my hands. Can I really have this? Of course. It's a present. You can keep it. Carrie tightens her fingers around the book, once again brushing her smooth skin against mine. This time she doesn't apologize. However, she can't help but blush once more as her cheeks bloom like a rose in spring. How did you know I liked this author? Well, they wrote the book you gave me before. It was quite worn, so I assumed you read it multiple times. Anyway, let's get going. We wouldn't want to miss the train. You're right. Carrie and I walk towards the train station, side by side. In a way, She's acting as my guide as I still don't know my way around. I can't help but take a few glances at her whenever possible. 
She herself does the same, peering towards me from time to time. The trip into the city wasn't long, but it sure was enjoyable. Carrie and I didn't converse much, but it wasn't as if either of us was uninterested in the other. An enjoyable silence. Carrie takes me through the city, trying to stay as close to me as she can, despite her taking the lead. It's confusing, sure, but I wouldn't be one to argue against it. We're almost there. She continues to weave through the urban sprawl as we make our way towards the library and towards the library she had planned on visiting. The way she walks is quite cute in its own way, as she takes small dainty strides making light footsteps which tap quietly against the pavement. Fin finally, she stops and turns towards me, almost making me bump into her. Sorry. She looks visibly upset about the ordeal, so I calm her down as always. It's alright, Carrie. Okay. Ugh. Anyway, we're here now. I look to my left to see a modern building with signage designating it as the town's public library. The exterior is fairly clean, so perhaps it is newly built. I preferred the old one. The stonework was pretty. Though, this one is good too. Carrie gives me her thoughts on the building, confirming my suspicion on the date of construction. It's no surprise, urban areas are always changing. Shall we go inside? Sure. You should have brought your uniform. They give discounts to students. So that's why she's wearing it. Certainly it'd be simpler for her to say she is a student anyway. Though pretending to be a regular high schooler on the Japanese curriculum works too, even though she looks far from it. I wasn't planning on buying any books anyway. Even if I wanted one, I'd take it out as a lease anyway. As a pair, we make our way inside the building. We are greeted by the we are greeted to the warmth of the heating alongside the traditional smell of books you'd expect in a library. I just want to look around. I probably won't get anything. It's weird that the signs in English if we're in Japan. I don't know, I've never been there, so maybe they have English signs. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. I have the one you gave me after all. Carrie, Carrie's cheeks glow a bright shade of crimson as she states the fact to me. Maybe the actual fact of the matter is that she wasn't just planning on going to the library and she just wanted to invite me out. Well, it's a possibility. I want to do more with her, but just coming here is enough. <laughs> Seeing her cute demeanor on the weekend is a treat in and of itself. The two of us strolling through the library together, with Carrie taking me between... The two of us stroll through the library together, with Carrie taking me between the bookshelves as she scans for anything that might pique her interest. I'm going to take a little sip of Wawa here. You should do the same. Quite refreshing. Here we go. I can't help but watch your eyes dart from shelf to shelf as she looks keenly at the covers of each book. She finally reaches out towards something and gracefully clasps the book within her grip. Found something? It's a book about gardening. I like flowers, so I thought it would become another hobby. How many hobbies does this girl have? We could get going now if you'd like. I can't find any books that would top the one y you gave me. Carrie shoots me a smile, one which pierces my heart. She guides me towards a digital checkout in which she swipes the book and places it within a bag. It's strange to think that even with libraries... It's strange to think that even libraries have self-service nowadays. The world sure is changing. Shall we go then? Yes, let's. 
Side by side, Carrie and I walk out of the library. Both the books in her bag cause it to sway as she takes step after step. We come to find ourselves outside the library, since neither of us had really planned on doing anything afterwards. My horoscope said today would be a good day. Alright, Carrie just lost major points for for the whole horoscope thing. Like, that's how, what a Gemini of her, am I right boys? No, but seriously, don't, I'm like, come on man, horoscopes, come on. Like, whore? Oscopes? Are we serious? Are we for real? She, but, okay, Carrie is perfect in that she has flaws. She is perfectly flawed, so this flaw only makes her that much more worthy. That's that's how I'm going to reframe the situation. Your horoscope? For some reason, Carrie brings up her horoscope. Not that I mind, but it's a pretty abstract topic to bring up out of the blue. Well, was it? It was. Oh, that's the most enthusiastic she sound this whole this whole game. Carrie eagerly exclaims the fact, causing herself to blush. Alongside her, I also go red. I would have never thought that I could have brought so much satisfaction to someone. When is your birthday anyway, Carrie? I ask her simply because I want to know more about her. If I don't know her birthday, how am I supposed to get her a present? My birthday? September 3rd. I'm a Virgo. That's exactly what a Gemini would say. So, her birthday wasn't even that long ago. Happy belated birthday? Thank you. When's yours? She wants to know my birthday as well. I may as well tell her. Number of month. Uh... Number of month. So, 10, like, do, do I just, not, yeah, I have the same birthday as Naruto. Don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> I think I messed that up. I think I was supposed to write it differently. Uh, my birthday is on the 10 October. <laughs> oh, I'll add it to the calendar on my phone. That's pretty epic. Speaking of phones, how do you know my name was Head? Uh, speaking of phones, I really need a contact picture for Carrie. Well, I just want a photo of her, but still. Carrie, can I take a photo of you for your contact picture? What? Carrie looks shocked at my statement and moves herself back slightly, but it doesn't stop me from bringing my phone up and taking the shot. Her expression in the photo isn't a happy one, but she still looks pretty cute. I'll keep it. I don't like having my photo taken. Come on, you look good in it. Turning my phone's screen to face Carrie, I show her the photo. She still doesn't look particularly happy about it, but I don't think she's angry. Alright, I'll let you keep it. But only because it's you. Dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. Carrie, bro. Oh my gosh. Her statement takes me aback. Carrie herself seems pretty composed about it, albeit blushing slightly. Uh, anyway, is there anything else you'd like to do? Anything else? I'm not sure. Maybe some lewd hand-holding, perhaps? Have you got any ideas? Well, I asked her since I couldn't really come up with anything myself, though with a bit with a bit thought, hmm, first typo of the game, still a great game, though with a bit of thought, it shouldn't be that hard to find something to do. Pfft. Okay, what what sort of beta cuck chooses go home as the option? Like, like, huh? No. Absolutely not. We are having a look around the town. As, as most certain. 
How about we have a look around the town for a bit? I wouldn't want to go home early. Carrie nods her head in agreement, making her redden cheeks more noticeable. Me neither. We walk together, heading away from the library without a sense of direction. We'll end up somewhere. Both of us just want to spend more time with the other. Carrie's braids rest over her shoulders, brushing against her body as each luxuriant strand gleams in the sunlight. It is a nice sight, but I do wonder what she would look like with her hair down. Time flows forward as Carrie and I wander around the town together at a temperate pace. We look within the windows of stores and occasionally make comments on what we see. Carrie slows to a halt as we stroll by another store. This is the first store that has gotten her this mesmerized, so I turn to face the store as well. A music store? Carrie stares at the building, as if enchanted by its aura. By the looks of it, it's been here quite a while. It has a traditional sign and printed glass which has worn over the years. Beyond the glass, though, is the thing I can only assume Carrie is fascinated by. She takes steps towards the window, closing herself in on it. Her palms meet the glass as she touches the window, almost in awe. Behind, it sits a large, gold-trimmed harp. The polish on the wood mirrors Carrie's enthralled face as it stands before us, grand grandiosely staring back at her. You can play the harp, can't you? Carrie moves her face away from the glass, turning to face me while still maintaining her upbeat expression, one of pure happiness. I'm glad you remember. Dude, this game is teaching me things like... I already knew this, but like, if you remember things, just about people in general, if you remember their interest and things they like, uh, it makes you a better person, uh, or at least more like charismatic and likable. But if you remember stuff about girls, they like that, or or so I'm told. I don't interact with the uh, the members of the opposite sex on uh, as frequently as I do with Carrie. So, but yeah, this this is gonna be good for the future, unless you know, the whole like 2D thing becomes real, which I'm I'm kind of banking on at this current point in time. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of Wawa. You should too. Um, excellent, excellent, exquisite water. Mm. But I wasn't looking at the harp. What was she looking at? You weren't? No. That gramophone on the level below it? I've never seen one before. To think she was this enthralled by a piece of outdated technology when there is the best looking harp I've ever seen sitting right before her. I'm not going to blame her for it though. The harp I own. It's much grander than that one. Damn, Carrie, no need to flex, girl. Shit. How rich is this girl? Sure, you need money to get into our school, but a harp like that? That. Let's start over there. Sure, you need money to get into our school, but a harp like that's bound to cost thousands. Carrie and I turn around, with her seemingly satisfied with the amount of gramophone exposure she has received. A brief glance at my watch tells me it's getting pretty late. I mean, the background looks like the sun is shining, but what do I know? Um, I'm not one to talk. I go to bed at 9 o'clock sometimes. Um regularly. Despite wanting to stay with Carrie for longer, I wouldn't want to worry my parents either. If my dad calls me, he might ask to speak to her if he can tell she's there. Carrie, it's getting pretty late. Shall we head home? Okay. With that, the two of us walked together towards the same station we arrived at. Carrie seems as happy as I am about this trip with her lips still curled softly into a smile as the setting sun shines upon her.
quite a good date if you I do say so myself. The sky is noticeably darker than before as we walk through the streets where we first met. Today certainly was enjoyable, both of us finding satisfaction just by being with each other. Carrie looks at me with a blush. My guess is that she's probably going to ask me something. Would you like to come to my house for dinner? Uh, uh, yes. She's inviting me to her house? That's a pretty bold thing to ask. Technically, we did just go on a date, but in reality, it was more of a trip to the library as friends. This, though, I don't know what to say. Carrie probably doesn't realize it's forwardness herself. That, or I'm overcomplicating it. Is having dinner at her house really such an abstract concept to me? Maybe going with her on this trip has given me a few thoughts I haven't had before. Either way, I can't just go over there without asking my parents first. Pulling out my phone, I gave Carrie my answer. Sure. Let me just tell my parents where I'll be. Carrie gives me a nod as I wait for someone to pick up on the other end of the line. My house isn't even that far from here, so I could have just walked in and told them. Though, this though is easier, despite it costing money. Yeah, I remember last time we gave our sister that British accent, but I don't... Hello? No, no, this, we'll just do a little lolly action. Hello? God, I hate this. <laughs> Unexpectedly, my sister answers in the place of either my mother or father. Sis, where's mum and dad? Oh yeah, we're like British or something. They've gone out to dinner. They never told me anything about that. Well, will you be fine on your own? I'll be out for a bit too. Yeah, I'll get to play my music extra loud. Just don't disturb the neighbors, okay? Don't worry, I won't. I'll tell mom and dad that you've gone somewhere with a girl, okay? She ends her sentence with a laugh, even though I really am going somewhere with a girl. Alright, whatever. I'll see you later. Sure. She hangs up before I can, leaving me holding my phone next to my ear listening to the silence. The warmth of my pocket greets my hand as I put it away, turning to face Carrie, who is still observing me intently. Shall we go then? Sure. I'll lead the way. I think that is a great place to stop the episode. Despite the fact that I guess this is a continuation of our date. I said we'd get through the date next episode, but it seems like a a, a nice built-in stopping point made by the game developers, which is pretty epic of them. So, next time, we will be going inside a girl's house, which is pretty darn epic. Thank you for watching episode 5 of Sounds of Her Love. If you like this video, could you do me a favor? You see that mouse? I don't know if you're using a, a scroll wheel type mouse or like one of the the built-in uh, touch screens. Either way, uh, just do this for me. Hover over the like button for a second. Just demolish it. I want you to click it so gosh darn hard that it's going to be like, ow, that was so gosh darn hard. Why'd you click it that hard? That's kind of what I want you to do. Um, I don't think it's asking for too much, but anyway. Also comment and subscribe, that'd be pretty epic of you. Thanks for watching, and as always, help me find a girlfriend, and bye bye